Hello. I'm going to discuss an elephant in the room. And the elephant is this man. This man. And his name is Mohammed Rodwan. Months ago, he was driving his van when he was stopped by a traffic policeman, Stuart Alton by name. The story isn't clear about whether this was because uh, Rodwan was, oh, I wish he would stop, was driving erratically or, or because PC Alton had a warning that this van wasn't insured, which it wasn't. But whatever, when the van stopped, Mr. Rodwan jumped out of the cab and flew at PC Alton with a machete and he inflicted many cuts on him and he, he actually fractured his skull with the force of the blows before PC Alton, Alton, I'm sorry PC Alton if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, he was on the point of unconsciousness when he fired his taser and succeeded in subduing Rodwan because that guy, Rodwan, was in such a state of maniacal fury that he took two jolts of the taser before he even noticed it. PC Uton has been called Britain's bravest cop. I doubt he is. He was fighting for his life and the, the reserves of strength you can summon up in situations like that are often beyond understanding. But what I find beyond understanding is why there's been not so much discussion about Mr. Rodwan himself. He's obviously a psychopath. It turns out he has already at least two convictions for violent acts, including rape and the use of a machete on two other men, uh, one of which he practically severed his hand. Uh, but this is what really interests me, and it's this paragraph down here. The handyman, who was previously known as Rodney Reed and lived in his van, was jailed for nine years in 1997 for wounding two men in his flat in East London. Now, he's called Mohammed Rodwan now, which means that at some point Rodney Reed converted to Islam. I'd say that this probably happened in prison. Tommy Robinson and others have warned about the Muslim gangs which dominate some British jails and either force conversion to Islam on their fellow prisoners or make the environment so dangerous that prisoners convert just for a quiet life and some protection. Sometimes it's because they think the food's better. But this has been going on for a long time. Uh, here's a report from Christian Concern. Let's see what it says. Uh, it's just right in my way here. Um, Officers at Britain's high security Long Latin jail have received reports of Muslim inmates forcing younger inmates to convert to Islam, while a Muslim gang has begun to enforce Sharia law in the prison. Uh, and then uh, there's, uh, there's this one here, which is from the Times. Oh, that one, by the way, was from Christian Concern. I don't know whether I said that. And this one is from the Times. Muslim gang leaders are orchestrating violence in top security jails, including administering beatings to force inmates to convert to Islam, a report has said. The fact that this chap, Rodwan, is as mad as a hatter, uh, doesn't seem to have mattered in the least to the people who converted him. 
but it should matter to us. It should matter that a nutter who's been in prison for violent crimes is shoved out onto the streets to live in his van, surely not the best place for a nutter, and it should matter to us that somewhere along the line this nutter was given a religion like Islam to justify his nuttery. In fact, it should matter to us that so many Islamists got their start in jail. Uh, Khalid Massoud, who was one of the Westminster Bridge murderers, he converted in jail and apparently that's happened uh, to several others. And uh, by the way, it's not confined to the United Kingdom. This is, let's find it, an American study. Here we are. Trends in prisoner conversions to Islam. Islam is the fastest growing religion in Western prisons. It's the violent men in prisons who are being converted. 80% of all US prison conversions are to Islam. It includes, well, just about anyone. Annual prisoner conversions to Islam, 35,000. And I know America's a big place, but that's a lot of converts. Uh, percent Muslims in major prison systems, 18%. I don't know how many Muslims there are in America, but I think it might be about 5%. So that's very high there. I think it might be less, actually. Prison conversions to Islam since 9-11, 420,000. That's nearly half a million. Hang on a minute. I'm just a um, percentage of Muslims in USA. 1.1%. 1.1% and 18% in the prison system. Now that's quite a spectacular number, isn't it? The, the, the thing is that the men who are in prison, both in America and in the United Kingdom, are there generally for being dangerous and most likely for being stupid as well. And they're absolutely the sort of violent robots that some people with an agenda would find most convenient to wind up and set into action. And, you know, it's not like it's a big secret. There are other things like the Rochdale grooming stuff. and That was a big secret. But this, conversions to Islam in British prisons and obviously in American prisons as well, they're well known. They're being reported. So why are those in government not taking any more notice of it? If you want to donate or contact, the information will be rolling over the Granny Opteryx as I speak. Please like, subscribe and share because it does help with the algorithm. If you visit my channel on YouTube and one day discover that I've disappeared without warning, you'll still find me on BitChute or Minds. Just go to either of those platforms and do a search for Granny Opteryx. If you're already watching this on BitChute or Minds, good for you. Meanwhile, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember that you must keep checking the subscribe and bell icons because occasionally they reset. Till next time.